so just kind of the, the small growing pains of just just getting familiar with jungle scout and just getting familiarizing myself with um doing the research actually so you know i i do find i, I you know i try to get it in a couple hours every night but i, I kind of find myself you know just trying to learn jungle scout to begin with so that's that's where i'm at right now okay cool uh yep yep gotta learn that jungle scout uh so, I, I do have a, a Jungle Scout question. Um, uh, let, let, me, uh, let me reply to uh, Javier first. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because um, you asked a question about uh, what if there's a cool product but there's no specific keyword for it. Um, yeah. yeah, that's part of the whole game that we're playing. It's, it's tricky. Yeah. Is we're playing the Amazon method, which is where we're plopping a product in front of an existing keyword, uh, foot traffic, so to speak. Instead of yeah. existing keyword, people are typing in this keyword. People are typing in this keyword. You're going to yeah. place, we're trying to place a product on that existing page one where people are already okay. typing in the keyword. Yeah. And so, so we're, trying to, we're trying to get on a page one that has not too much competition on that uh, page one for that niche within a niche keyword, long tail keyword, okay. whatever you want to call it. Um, okay. So, uh, so it's tricky, but these first three, four weeks, just don't worry too much about that. If it's a if it's a cool idea, don't worry too much about the keyword. Put it into the spreadsheet um, and keep moving on and come back to it later. Okay, and then, then I guess it. it one. Yeah, and then I guess on that line it is like if 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 I found like a product and there's like one guy that's killing it, you know, you know, there's one guy that he has multiple items of of the same thing. And, and his name is like throughout, you know, his name is on Jungle Scout like five or six times, but he seems like the only one. And, but nobody else seems to be selling it. Is, is that, is that a good indicator or a bad indicator? I guess, you know, is it, is, there's only one guy, mm -hmm. but he seems to be doing it, uh, doing it well. Is that, does that it's mean that he's brand. basically, huh? It's a big no, brand. no big brand, no big brand. No. Did you start to see if he has any other, um, say a big, um, audience other presence outside of amazon or anything like that i did not um, i guess that's, could be, uh, that's how i i don't know how to do could that be you can do a quick so oh, what patent, you could yeah. do is a quick google patent search search on google see if they have apps that traffic but that's not this first month that's not these first three weeks so yeah. plop okay. it into the spreadsheet okay. fill out the basic you know fill out the basic numbers even if the yeah. basic you know check one first glance numbers don't check out if it's still a really an exciting thing, you can still leave it in there. You know, it's okay. just a guideline, this spreadsheet. So if something's okay. really intriguing and exciting, just plop it in the sheet and just go to the next fucking thing. Cause you're going to get, okay. you're going to go down these wormholes, like you said, and you're going to spend yeah. two hours just looking into this one niche. And then yeah. it's a waste of time. This first three okay. weeks, we need to get our eyeballs on uh, break down 50 different niches that are, that are, okay. uh, that are interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Getting your brain come to back to it. Come back to it. Then we'll go David, come back to it. Um. Cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Scott, uh, we'll go back to you then with your question. Yep. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to step on you there earlier. I had a little bit of a lag. No worries. Uh, so, Jungle Scout, how much credence do you put on that sort of ranking score they throw up there when you're using the Chrome extension? Um, you know. I, I've hit on a few ideas where I'm getting like a seven out of ten, which okay, but but do I just kind of ignore that and and, and follow the a little tighter on the workbook? It, as an IT guy, especially somebody who uses like automated scoring tools and stuff a lot, it's hard for me visually to ignore that. If I do something, I get like a four out of ten. I'm like, ah, oh, crap, bad idea. Move on. But maybe I should or shouldn't. I don't know. Yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely something to take note of. Um, I think there's in the spreadsheet there's a place to record that uh for reference but um it's just an algorithm it's just a software and basically what it's doing is it's it's scraping all the data right that they have and they're like uh comparing the number of sellers so the number of listings versus like the revenue so it's like doing a supply and demand uh comparison and that always doesn't make it always doesn't make perfect sense um, so of course, common sense trumps everything, but, um, um, so you just got to use common sense, but take note of it. 
in the uh, um, in the spreadsheet and um, and then move on to the next one and then when you go back for the next round of, of analysis on each niche um, then really look into it and see if there's an opportunity um, in my mind the best opportunity score is to have a unique model a unique product then it, then it doesn't matter what, what the competition is if you're different shoppers are always going to some shoppers are always going to choose you because you have that unique little thing that uh, makes you stand out that makes you a little bit more valuable than the other guys so yeah, and as you will learn uh, in, in, a, in a later uh, chapters of this course it's all about we have a term for it it's called the multiple layer uh, differentiation uh, layer so we teach you different ways to differentiate yourself to set yourself apart so uh, that's going to be part of basically making competition become irrelevant so for now just focus on going through the motions to doing as to put as to putting as many product and the and the data sheet so you can understand how the process works and after that we'll dive deeper into what how, what to do to really differentiate yourself and make competition become irrelevant. Absolutely. Okay. And then a question about, so is an area of, of personal interest for myself and for Alex is jeeping like off-road, you know, Jeep. Um, we have one, we like to do that sort of thing. There's a lot of niches in that, a lot of sub niches. There's also a lot of, uh, people who are really into it deep and willing to spend money on quirky little things. Um, and I found a few of those. I haven't found one yet that necessarily relates to the question I'm about to ask, but I know it will be. I know we say basically the size of a bread box. What are your thoughts on weight? Because I know that's going to come into shipping too. Because you start getting things with Jeeps, you're going to get something that might be the size of a bread box, but it might weigh 15 pounds. Because it's going to be a solid steel piece of something that you add onto a winch or something like that. Um. Yeah, um, you know, there's there's no rules set rules set in stone. Uh, obviously, uh, plenty of heavy products get shipped on Amazon and all around the world all the time. Weight sets and shit. Um, so you just got to, uh, you know, keep in mind the basics. Um, is the product going to be unique? Uh, and then do the the simple uh, Amazon uh, FBA fee calculator. And you can go to a sell.amazon.com slash pricing to see that um, or use the, uh, use the FBA uh, profit calculator. Um, but, uh, but yeah, definitely possible. If you can come up with a great product, it doesn't matter how heavy it is, people are going to pay the money. So it's just a matter of, yeah, shipping fees are going to be a little bit less, but if you're unique, you can charge more. So it could be more profitable than, than a light thing. Um, it's all relative. But um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the big picture vision. But for this first three weeks, again, just pop it in the spreadsheet as an opportunity uh, and then move on to the next one. Got it. Yeah, buddy. Um, on my end, here's the, just hit a thousand reviews for this guy. It's my main product. So that's my milestone for this week. Very big milestone. Hitting a thousand reviews, that's that's the that's the goal of Amazon. That's the right. holy grail. If you can hit a thousand reviews and have four more four stars or more, you're like locked in right there on page one. So um, just a little taste of what's to come, guys. Um, took us a little bit under two years. So um, how many sales per day so, does that yeah. translate to? What was that? Roughly how many sales per day does that translate to? Oh, roughly like like 30 or 40 a day. Okay. So yeah. what rank are you now on, on, your, on, on, on the first page? Are you first, second, third? First page, well, it depends what keyword, but for our main keywords, yeah, first page. Nice. Very good. Yeah, like stick on phone wallet. It's like the main one stick on card holder. So Are you targeting a specific crowd or just generic? Anyone with a phone. Okay. Very broad. It's very broad. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, I guess it's a, it's open up again for a Q and a, um, uh, anything else uh, that you're wondering on your side, uh, Javier? Um, like, uh, when I search, uh, like a specific keyword and then, you know, I, I use the extension for, from jungle scout and 
like if, if if some of the products are are nothing like the one I want to sell, but they're on the page one, of course. Do that's do I I do I take their their monthly sales and their revenue and all that? Do I do I add those up too? If they even even if they're not anything like the product I'm selling, do I you put those in the, in the spreadsheet? Account. Do I put the, that you information that in the yeah. spreadsheet? So you're saying, do you take that into account if it's like a totally different thing? Yeah. I would say no, because um, okay. they're not they're not competing with what you would be selling. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, often keywords, certain words can mean two different things, or okay. three things. So that page one may be mixed of different types of shit, but uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, yeah, it, they're not going to be your competitors if they're uh, if they're a different thing. Exactly. Okay. And then on, on the extension of Jungle Scout, another question, uh, on those videos that you, sh you show, you know, you, you show like the rank, uh, and on this one, uh, are they basically just ranked when I, you know, I, I search the keyword and then I turn on the Jungle Scout, uh, extension. When that happens, I see that there's a ranking on the far left. Is that, is that the ranking right there? Or is there a separate ranking of, and is that ranking, is that even relevant? Let me see. Yeah, the the Chrome extension, it pops up the box. Yeah. And they show up in an order. Yes. And on the so far it, left it, is a number. Yeah, is that the ranking? Is that is that their ranking? Yeah. That's the, yeah, that's the organic ranking on page one. So it should be the same okay. exact order that you see them on page one. Okay, okay, all right then. Okay, that's 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 basically the. It's just jungle, Scott. I gotta get used to it. Um, and just figuring it out. Just play with that then, yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I think I have questions, but I'm I'm still trying to figure it out. So I think I'm good right now. And at any cool. time, any questions you have, just don't be shy. Post them and uh, on the on the Facebook group uh, chat we have. That's what we're here for, and that okay. applies for all of you guys. Yep. We're yep. very active. We Not check. In. We check the group. Out. Yeah. Yep. Just keep learning. Learning as you go. That's uh, how life goes. Uh, but yeah, keep up the good work. Keep in putting those one or two hours a night in. So keep it up. Oh, it's opened up. Uh, Alex and uh, Scott. It's it's just you two uh, on here. So uh, anything else on your guys' side or? I, I don't seem to have anything. I, I definitely think I will uh, this next meeting around because I haven't got to put in my hours yet this week. Uh, we're going to go do a deep dive this weekend. Um, the, the hope would be to get close to filling out our ideas by that point. I've, I've hit our 30. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a real focused effort, both at us going at it from a different angle. So we've got kind of two heads going at it. I think it might be able to get a broader scope and, and of ideas and get at it quicker. Here's a fun exercise for both of you guys and for all of you guys. Make a, make a list for each separate category. For example, one for items you use on a daily basis at home, one in the kitchen, one in the garden, one if you go to the gym, one in the office, one in the outdoors. And whatever product you use, you see around you, whatever, just uh, add them on the list. Make that for a week. And after a week, you should have anywhere between 50 to 100 in each category. And that's going to be a great place to start from. Okay. Yep. Just gotta put in those uh, put in those hours. But uh, yeah. Uh, as always, let us know if you have questions in the uh, in the chat. Um, any uh, updates or anything uh, to add on your side, payment? Sorry. Say that again. Uh, any updates or things to add on your side? Uh, no, just uh, busy hustling here. Just um, definitely want to get finally with my product as well that I've been wanting to uh, document, but been so busy with things here. But I definitely want to get going on that as well. So I'm going to start putting some, I'm going to go as well through the product research, just like you guys using the same principle, because I do want to uh, document the whole process. And that will be like a case study for, for the public. Awesome. 
Yeah, that was I got another. Point. I got another question. Uh, yeah. As far as for as far as for Amazon, uh, I was I was looking at on on the Amazon, and I you know I, I'm looking at these products, and then I, it shows the product, and then below below the price, it tells me, it it tells me like FBA one seller. Um, so I, I've never noticed that before. I guess I've I've, I've never looked at that. So it, can I use that to, because I, I, most of the times I see is like just one seller, uh, uh, FBA. So it is, can I use any of that information that Amazon gives me? Um, uh, is that is that vital at all? It's not uh, vital, but it gives a good yeah. idea of the competition and the scenery and all that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't pay too much attention to that, yeah. honestly. Um, Okay. sold by amz or sold by merchant or sold by fba uh, i don't yeah. think that i'm focused on good product good unique product ideas well, how can okay. i improve a product how can i make something functionally unique what is something yeah. that i would love to use in my life that doesn't exist yet that's that's my that's what's going on in my brain so it's kind of yeah. uh, you know yeah. an, an inventors slash common sense what can i make that's that's simple but unique that would be useful um so so this whole you know first three weeks in the spreadsheet is, is an exercise to get our minds running and jogging and uh, and exercising literally it's a brain mm -hmm. exercise to get us our eyeballs on all different sorts of physical products there's tens of thousands of them um yeah. so this first three weeks is just get our eyeballs overwhelmed with different types of niches but don't get too overwhelmed don't mm -hmm. go down too many rabbit holes just be scrolling, be browsing around, looking around, shopping around, walking around, jogging around Amazon's virtual mall, which is probably the size of a fucking whole city if it were like an actual virtual mall. That's actually, and that. we should get, that, that'd be funny. They should, yeah. that should actually probably be coming in the near future, virtual reality, you know, oh, yeah. uh, walk around the Amazon virtual shopping mall. That's going to come. You, you got to, you got to say it. Um, yeah. Javier, okay. just to add to what Riley said, the only time I would pay attention to that, for example, uh, just to get um, an idea of the size of the market, let's say any given product, I, let's say it shows three, P, three, um, uh, three sellers and uh, the total amount of sales per month, let's say is $10,000. So that means that each of them is getting about $3,000. So that tells me that the market is not that big. So that's going to make me think, is it worth my time to get in a market where the, uh, in a, in a market where the market is not that big? So I can give you an idea in that. But that's okay. again further later down the road. Okay. Well, uh, I guess I'm on the opposite end because I'm, I'm all the items that I'm seeing is like the FBA seller. It, it always says one seller. I'm like, well, if there's only one seller, I can get in there too, and they seem to be making good money. So um, that's why I was asking if you know if how much stock do I actually put in that on, on those numbers from Amazon and stuff like that. So if you see a product okay. that has good uh, good potential, put it on the side. And then again, this uh, the first uh, few weeks is all about compiling yeah. your list of products. And then later on, when we're going to analyzing it and going further down, that's when we're going to take a look at those products and, and go into a deeper analysis. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Yeah, whether it's FBA or AMZ, I don't really tell, pay too much attention if they're FBA or whatever. As long as they're on page one, they're available and they can be, they can, they can be ordered, then they're competition. So, yeah, it's, it's all the same. Uh, for all intents and purposes, yeah. Um, and a side note on that, a lot of sellers are now moving from FBA to FBM uh, in this particular time of year because of their clogged up with COVID uh, and Q4. So uh, FBA limit. inventory is limited. So lots of sellers are now fulfilling themselves. So that's why you may notice less FBA listings. So, so yeah, so yeah, um, cool updates on my end. Just keep hustling guys. Um, this first few weeks is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a brain, brain blast. It's a really tedious and, you know, peeling out that sheet, but yeah, just keep putting in that work. And, um, you know, I think you guys are pretty clear on your action steps for next week. Just same shit, <laughs> same shit, same shit as last week. Just keep, keep banging it out. Um, keep banging it out. You know, we're not, uh, we're not here to babysit you guys and, you know, check in every, every day to make sure you're going to put in the hours. That's, that's up to you guys, you know, obviously. So whatever it takes, pencil it in, um, you know, block out time, whatever you got to do. Will do. So, Cool. Scott and Alex, uh, everything uh, sound good on your end? Uh-oh. 
Yep, absolutely. Just ready to get back on it, get cranking. Like I said, it's just uh, ingesting a lot of information right now, so there's not not a lot of direct questions. It's trying to just make sense of all every everything. Yep. One cool. thing that I want to add: look into niches that are that are booming right now. For example, because of the current situation, uh, look into, for example, say the baby niche. There will be a lot of babies being born, so look into products like, for example, baby shower, for example, related products. Uh, for example. Uh, home, uh, home workout equipment, working from home uh, products, uh, gardening, uh, you know, um, improving your house, doing little work at home. Look into those kind of categories because those are going to be booming not just now, but for, the, for months and years to come. Don't look at what's hot right now. Look at what's going to be hot uh, for the, uh, say, midterm, say, for the next two to three years. Look into that and try to find uh, groups of passionate people that are hobbies related those will be the best. And if you can add to that the element of something that's recurrent, that's gold. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So don't forget to uh, browse around those uh, aisles when, uh, when the time comes. And, uh, so, one, one other quick question. I know you do have a, uh, a, 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 rule, a rule of thumb against electronics, which makes definite sense. What's your thoughts on sort of things that are more, a little more mechanical? I'll give you a specific. Uh, RV, uh, RVing right now is in a humongous uptick because of COVID, like big time. I, I, I work at the, the largest RV seller in America and business is up like 150% pre-COVID. Um, and I see these things every day and I see the people who use them and I've got a couple ideas around accessories I can sell to specifically to RVers. Um, they tend to be an older crowd, uh, but they also tend to have money, so they got a lot of accessories and stuff. So, like, I've come up with this concept of a, a longer, extended, like, iPad holder. A lot of them use iPads even for, like, their GPS when they're driving because they can't see their phone, so they want another iPad. So a longer extender, but you get a lot more rocking and rolling on those things, obviously, especially when you're getting, like, a 40-foot coach, you know, that sort of thing on three axles. They, I, I'm looking for a system that I found a couple that have kind of like gyros almost in them that are like self-stabilizing, like some of the like the the, the selfie cams you see people walking around Chiang Mai and stuff with it self-stabilized. Looking at something like that specifically in folks in towards RV crowd. I mean, are do you have concerns around mechanical stuff because of the the fail issues too potentially? Um. A little bit, a little bit, um, but you know, um, yeah, it's a rule of thumb, but um, you know, it comes down to if there's a supplier and they're making those things and get the sample and if it works fine, and if, as long as it doesn't break, then you're gonna be good. Like if you ordered it on Amazon and you could put it up in your RV and then you would work it and it works, then it's gonna work for your customer too. So uh, yeah, just verify, verify the sample. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely it, just because, uh, it's got, you know, a gyro, a, a gyroscope in it. Um, doesn't mean you can't sell it. It's definitely on the table. Scott, okay. where would you uh, source that from? If you were to go with this product. Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a good, good niche. So plop it in the spreadsheet and, uh, and keep going. Yeah. Source. I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I previously, when I did drop ship, I, I, oddly enough, I did RV related stuff too. So I worked with some American manufacturers just because they were the main ones. Um, but obviously you're not getting quite the profit margins you would out of, you know, India or, you know, or China or somewhere like that or Vietnam. Um, now, here's a, but, that could be an opportunity as well. For example, you can go after these accessories and, and, and be the premium version, the premium uh, seller in the market. And there's definitely people that will be looking for the premium version not the cheap version so you can become the premium seller just like riley is becoming the premium seller of the uh sticky wallet you can become the premium and there will be a lot of people that will be will gladly pay extra to get something that is of premium quality and especially if it's made in the usa you, you, i wouldn't underestimate uh, the uh, the the uh the fact that a lot of people are now looking to buy, you know, homemade products. And for a product like yours, for your niche like yours, with people with uh, disposable income and willing to pay, that would be a perfect niche to source from, from the U.S. if you can find a local uh, supplier. I would not look into that in, uh, in China or uh, anywhere else. Okay, yeah, that's actually a good thought because, yeah, they got, like say, if you got a person spending four or $500,000 on an RV and they're towing exactly. a $75,000 car behind it, they're not going to think twice to spend $75 or $100 on a mount. Exactly. 
So you, you understand well your, your, uh, your ideal customer, your market. So give them exactly what they want. And these people are not looking to penny pinch and looking for a cheap product. Give them high quality, premium, homemade, made in USA. If you can do that, you're golden, my friend. Yeah, good thoughts. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like the I like the RV niche. Um, it's a good idea, but uh, yeah, again, don't go too deep on one uh, idea. Plop it in the spreadsheet, and uh, but yeah, feel free to you know take a day or a couple of days and go deep into the, all the RV accessories um, and just pop as many as you can into the sheet before going too Scott, deep on any one. I uh, I posted a few um, uh, I think a week or two ago. Uh, a document listing a uh, list of suppliers in, in all the countries. So you would be looking mainly at the one for the U.S. Uh, look in the Facebook group under the resource section. You will see all the documents and look for the one that is a uh, list of suppliers in uh, various countries outside of China. Okay, great. Thank the you. The main one is basically the Thomas, Thomas net dot, uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas dot net inventory. I'm sure you've heard of that. Yes. And there's a couple of others that I've uh, listed as well. So uh, look into the Facebook group. And you'll find uh, quite a few. Okay, perfect. All right, guys, I'm going to yep. cut short, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little tight on time today, so I'm going to drop. I appreciate all your uh, input and Bye. feedback. and uh, Look forward to seeing everybody next week. Yeah, no that's good. Post it. Any yeah, question, just post in the group. Great. Thanks, guys. You're Bye. Cheers. <sighs> yeah, that's uh, – that's all I got. Just keep hustling, you know. Um, you know these these uh, these calls are just as much just you know accountability and just check-in calls as they are you know Q and A's. So um, you know, thanks for thanks for being here. I don't know what's up with the other guys. We got a a payment. Can you make sure to message them after this and just just check in, see what see what they're where they're at sure. and why they missed the call. Yeah. I think uh, Ty mentioned that he has uh, other calls. He couldn't make it. Uh, Dominic, I'm not sure. Maybe he's too busy in Mexico, having a good time. <laughs> oh, well, no. Dom, Dom was supposed to be on yesterday. Um, oh, okay. Dom's good too. Okay, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, cool. And any uh, anything uh, anything else before we uh, wrap it up, Javier? No, I think I'm good, man. So yeah, I I just you know, keep at it and just kind of learn jungle scout, uh, jungle scout. And then um, yeah, if I had any questions, I'll, I'll just post it up. Um, I'm sure I'll have some, and so I'll just throw it up in the group. See and. Oh, yeah. What the, is the a comment. niche? What is a niche that you're really passionate about? What is your your your, 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 your some of the your top three hobbies, for example? Oh, th- uh, well, like top three hobbies. I'm not even really looking at what my hobbies. I'm. Um, I had the same kind of uh, a niche as the Jeep idea. So I had some, you know, some niches from the Jeep. And then I started thinking about, um, you know, my, some, uh, the same thing with the babies. Um, my, my sister-in-law had babies. So I was just kind of thinking about what they need and what they would buy and what they would buy on a regular basis and stuff like that. And so stuff like that. And then uh, I'm always interested in like, just, just, personal fitness so you know any kind of anything in the fitness uh, um, arena w- I, w- I would love to do so but I haven't really had a deep dive into any any of the the fitness stuff could, just because I feel like maybe that's uh, you know people a lot of people are doing it at, at this time so um, so I'm just kind of trying to work around all that right now and then maybe focus on on the stuff that I, I really love uh, at the is there anything the that, for example that you yourself uh for example, you see that uh, it's not as good as it could be that you use yourself. That what I'm trying to say is: is, is there any product you can think of that you yourself can be the f- uh, the first uh, customer? Mm. That you would love to have something that you're using on a daily basis that's not as good as it could be, and you could. Uh, and and if you have that that issue, you can you can bet that there's um, uh, a lot of other people having the same issue too. Yeah. Well, I, I the thing is like a. Uh, that I would use every day that that I don't really like is just the the car mount things too. But I think a lot of people are doing the car mounts as well. Um, I, and I was kind of looking on some of the, you know, just kind of doing, doing some product research on some, uh, some of the newer car, car mounts that are, I think that, you know, they, they, they're basically, they, they don't use, the, they don't use cables. It's basically, you know, the, 
they have the, the wireless the wireless charging adapted to them but but i, I think uh, and those seem to be selling pretty good but those are kind of electronic so i kind of stayed away from that um so yeah I, that's the thing i just gotta i, I gotta find something that uh that I, I use every day that I can make better. So that's what I'm trying to learn. Ideally, it would figure be that out too. Ideally, it would be something that that that's a, that's a niche that you understand that you that you're passionate about. But that's ideal. So obviously, yeah. it, it may or may not apply. So that's the first place that I would personally look into something that you're passionate, that you understand, that you've experienced, connections, contacts. Yeah. So you can really tap into those. Yeah. For the later for the later stages of you launching your products, so you all, all, always have to think. A few steps ahead of you, not just, uh, you know. Yeah. And then I, I used to be into like gaming. So I started looking into some of the gaming stuff and like some of the accessories for like the remotes and stuff like that. And, and you know, I kind of, I did a little deep dive in that and I, I, I got interested in, uh, I got excited about some, some of the items I found in there. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking at some of that too. So yeah, uh, I am finding, I, I'm looking at stuff that interests me. That interests my family and stuff like that, and that I, like you said, that I bought before, and then you know that I didn't like how I, how you know I could have made it better, or you know stuff like that. So, I'm 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 trying to find ideas like that, basically. Yeah, because when you launch a product, it's it's mainly about uh, it's not about the product; it's about your customer. You need to understand your customer. So, if you yourself yeah. are a customer, you already have this leg up. You understand the needs of yourself and, and the people like you. So that's, that's why it's important to, to uh, I would recommend to start with something that you understand that you yourself yeah. use. So that's going to give you like a kind of a shortcut, but if you don't, that's fine. You can always get into new niches, uh, immerse yourself, understand about them and, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. You're on the right and then when, when can I start? Like, um, when is it going to be the time where, you know, I'll maybe I, I I lower it down to like my top, my top five, and then kind of bounce it off y'all and see what y'all think. When is that going to be? Like in a couple of weeks or like further yeah, out? That's going to be okay. Yeah, like well, as soon as you get to to fifty niches, um, analyzing the sheet, then you go back to number one and you start crossing them out. Anything that you're like, definitely not going to do that. No, nah, definitely not going to do that. Start just fucking crossing it out ruthlessly. And then get down to your top 10 and then we'll start then on the call, start uh, telling us your ideas um, and uh, we'll, we'll go back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, I, I like the gaming niche. Obviously it's uh, it's trending um, into the future. It's always going to be big. So if you could start a gaming accessories brand, that's always great. Um, Javier, here's another uh, idea. Also, uh, uh, you're, 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 you're uh, you're Mexican, right? Yes. So try to look also into ethnic products because the the Latino community is huge in the U.S. Try to yeah. see if you can bring any traditional Mexican product. You can make a premium version of that, and then it's gonna be a gangbuster, man. Seriously. Yeah, that's I was I was kind of looking at that too, man. So yeah. You know, I was I mean, listening uh, to a podcast. I was listening to a podcast with this guy. Um, I'll. I'll I'll share it with you, with you uh, later on if you want. You know those uh, death, uh, death whistles, whistles from Mexico? I don't know if it's the right uh, term. Apparently, this guy was, uh, they were selling for $100, uh, $100 plus on Amazon, and the guy was able to source them even from Mexico for like $20 and yeah. sell them for like $120, $130. Like the uh, this so wish, whistles, like with typical Mexican you know, uh, okay. carving and stuff. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. saying you should go sell that because now it's already overdone. But just to get yeah. thinking started, I would also look into, again, tap into your, your, your heritage, your background, see any traditional Mexican product that people either cannot find or what they find is not as good as it could be. And you make a premium version of that and that. you will kill it. Yeah, okay. Yeah I, yeah, I got some ideas on that. So yeah, yeah. I can try to work on that. And that's yeah. a good idea. I'll, I'll work that angle. Yeah. But pop again, pop them into the sheet. Keep going wide this first three, three or four weeks. Um, so and then when you go back through, you can flesh out the idea, do some deeper research on those each of those niches. Yeah. So. So yeah, man, keep hustling. Um, good work. Oh, yeah. The other thing is about the wireless charging. Um, don't completely rule that out. Um, because, um, of course it is upward trending, very upward trending, 
Um, don't completely rule it out. Keep it in the sheet for as one of your 50. Um, okay. Especially if you were saying that you have an idea for a specific type of wireless charging. Um, uh, keep that because if it's a good, if it's something that you would actually buy yourself, then yeah. then that's 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 where the money's at. Um, okay. And there's pr plenty of suppliers where you, they make wireless chargers and they probably work fine. Yes, you're going to get some negative reviews for the, for the defective ones. Um, but if it's, if it's useful enough, like it sticks to your computer or something, this is a stupid idea. It sticks to the back of your computer so your phone can go on the back of it and then like stay there magnetically while you're working. Um, if it's a good enough idea, people will be really excited about it um, rather than mad about leaving a negative review so there'll be more okay. positive it's, it's it's all balanced more positive than negative so don't rule it out so so right now it, it, don't rule out anything um uh, yeah. just basically just basically out. go, go wide as go wide as possible yeah, it's, a, it's a rule of thumb go out wide as possible but the, but the rule of thumb is electronics um can be trickier especially for beginning entrepreneurs unless oh. you have a great idea to, to make a unique thing um, so, okay. Right. Cool. Thanks for the advice. We'll keep trucking, man. Um, good work. See you next week and see you in the group chat. Uh, Alex, uh, anything else, uh, on your end, if you're still there? I am back. Um, I can't think of anything else. Um, I do want to say that, um, Lorenzo had mentioned, you know, trying to solve problems or, or look at things in your everyday life. And that's definitely kind of the direction I've taken, um, I think as a single working mom, um, I definitely have a different vantage point than most on here. Uh, so things that save time uh, and effort may not necessarily save money, uh, but that is money. You know, you have limited time, limited resources. So things that help you organize, things that, you know, um, dual function between work and after work, you know, briefcase slash diaper bag, you know, that one covers up the, you know, zip one up and, and the other parts there, uh, those sorts of things, uh, time savers, the just going to kind of look down that alley. Uh, and I had said the same thing early on. Um, my daughter is a product of a, um, year that we had four hurricanes, five hurricanes hit Florida. <laughs> so, um, she was a product of hurricane four or five, not sure, but <laughs> There was a baby boom after that. So, you know, when this quarantine set up, I just laughed and there was, you know, a lot of memes about quarantines and, you know, the baby boom that's going to happen and it will. So, um, again, figuring out what I can solve uh, or find a solution for that wasn't there when I was, a, when my daughter was a kid or even kind of going back to some of those and seeing if those niches are still, you know, how many people are in it, the, all those little containers that hold Cheerios, you know, as silly as that sounds, a multi one, um, the different things that go in the dishwashers that hold baby bottles. I looked at that. Those are kind of overdone. But again, all those little time saver things, I think those are, are something worth diving into and just finding the right one. So that's where I've been searching, still trying to find, you know, possible products in there. Um, but yeah, so in your case, in your case, Alex, you already half of the equation already solved, which is uh, who's your target customer for you? To, I would recommend to be uh, single working moms, so you already have a perfect uh, uh, ideal customer now in terms of uh, products. So yeah, look into what uh, yourself and other uh, single working moms would need, would, would like to have in the product that they use on a daily basis, whether it's at, at home, in the kitchen, at the, at the office, at the gym, at the outdoors, whatever, that's mm -hmm. where your, your research will come into. So uh, do that and, uh, and serve this market. That's, a, yeah. that's an amazing market. Yeah, it's good. So yeah, just put, put, uh, do the quick research on each of those uh, niche uh, keyword ideas and then move on to the next one. Um, again, uh, this the first few weeks, you know, fill out that spreadsheet and then we'll go back through it and narrow it down to the top 10 and, uh, and, uh, deep dive from there. So cool. Well, good work guys. Uh, good call. Uh, thanks for, uh, being here and, um, yeah, putting in the work excited. Um, so yeah, any other questions, let us know in the group chat and, uh, yeah, have a good weekend and see you guys, uh, next week. Same time. Take care guys. Ciao. All right, man. Appreciate it.
Thanks for listening to the FBA Lifestyle Podcast. Don't forget to follow on all podcast platforms, YouTube, and Instagram. Ready to fast track your first or next FBA product? Ready to create a real product that leaves the competition in the dust? Then check out the 90-Day FBA Challenge, a 12-week accelerator program with weekly coaching calls where we help you go from zero idea what to sell to a product live on Amazon within 90 days and download the free Amazon Secrets ebook, FBA Lifestyle, The Amazon Experts. Start your FBA business. Achieve the freedom lifestyle.